All right, thank you, Jennifer. And actually, as Jennifer was speaking, I uh, just got a scam call coming into my cell phone. So it really proves the importance of, of staying vigilant. Um, I want to close out this session by talking a little bit about some of the programs that some of the previous speakers mentioned in a little bit more detail. So uh, these programs can help you to pay for your Medicare costs. My name is Brandi Bauer. I am Associate Director of the Center for Benefits Access at the National Council on Aging. Um, for those of you who may not be familiar with us, NCOA is a national nonprofit that has been around for over 70 years now. And while you may not be necessarily familiar with our name, you're likely familiar with some of the benefits of our work. We have, were on the forefront of advocating for the creation of Medicare and Medicaid. We helped to end mandatory retirement. We laid the groundwork for Meals on Wheels program and developed the Foster Grandparents program among many other things that we've done in our, our rich history. We really have a vision of uh, all of us having the right to age well and with dignity, purpose, and security. And at NCOA, we really work primarily in two areas, and that is to ensure that people can age with the optimum health and economic security. And so one of our passions is really to focus on connecting people to programs that can help them to pay for their basic costs of living, including Medicare. So I want to go into some more detail about a few of the benefits programs that were mentioned earlier, starting with this Part D low income subsidy or extra help. This, as previous pre presenters have noted, is a program that helps to pay for Medicare prescription plan and drug costs. In order to qualify for extra help, you must have Medicare Part A and or Part B. You must live within the US 50 states or District of Columbia. Uh, unfortunately, the program is not available yet in the US territories. You must meet the financial eligibility criteria, which I'm going to go into a little bit more detail in just a moment. And note that certain people will get this program automatically if they're already enrolled in any kind of Medicaid in Supplemental Security Income, or SSI, and or a Medicare savings program, which I will also talk about in a little more detail. So there are two levels of extra help and depending on your income, uh, that factors into which level you might be able to get. Um, but ultimately, people who receive this benefit will pay either no Part D plan premium or a sliding scale premium under what Medicare has called a benchmark amount. And that just me basically means that Medicare determines what is considered kind of an average plan benefit in each state. So maybe it's $33 in your state or $40 in another state. And if you get extra help, you would pay nothing up to that $40 average premium. Also, people with extra help will get will pay either no deductible if they receive full extra help or a $92 annual deductible if they're in partial extra help. At the pharmacy, this is where we see the most savings, as Doug mentioned before. Uh, for somebody in full extra help, when they go to the pharmacy and they pay for their generic drugs, they're only going to see co-payments of up to a maximum of $3.70 per fill. And likewise, for their brand name drugs, they're only going to pay up to a maximum of $9.20. For somebody with partial extra help, that would be a total of 15% coinsurance on the cost of drugs. And very importantly, because I know you've heard about this throughout today's programming, anyone who qualifies for extra help will not pay a late enrollment penalty. Um, that means if you didn't enroll in Part D and you didn't have other drug coverage, but then you suddenly get into Part D and you qualify for extra help, you don't ever have to worry about paying for that late enrollment penalty. So you've seen this before, but I want to just take a, a brief moment to go through it. And also just to point out that we have tables with this information in the NCOA exhibit hall if you want to find that and download that. Um, you can see that this is the financial eligibility criteria to receive extra help uh, for both single individuals and couples with slightly higher eligibility limits in Alaska and Hawaii, 
And I want to talk a little bit more about what is income and what is resources or assets, because we get a lot of questions about that. So what counts as income? Income for these federal programs is looking at not only any wages or earnings that you may have from a job or self-employment, it also looks at your social security benefits or your railroad retirement board benefits. Uh, it looks at pensions or any annuities, including veterans pensions, any alimony you may receive, any income you may receive from renting out a property. But I wanna point out a special note this, this year and last year is that any economic impact payments that you received under the COVID-19 legislation is not counted as taxable income. So that is considered a sort of tax credit or rebate and is not figured into the calculation for, for these programs. When we talk about resources and assets, what we're talking about is really um, sort of money that is you're easily able to liquidate. So money that you have in a checking account or a savings account or a money market account, uh, money that's contained in, in your retirement funds like stocks and bonds and retirement accounts, um, any second property. So not the home that you live in, but if you own like a vacation home, that would be counted against you. And then certain trusts. Uh, what is not counted as a resource are things like the home you live in, the vehicles you drive, your furniture, the things that you have to you know, have on a daily basis to, to sort of age in place. So you can apply for extra help through Social Security. Social Security partners with Medicare to administer this program. And as Doug said, you can apply online on the Social Security website. You can also apply using the paper form, but you will have to go to your local Social Security office to obtain that. Uh, Social Security is very fast at making a determination. So usually you get a decision letter within three weeks of applying and you will get a decision letter whether you qualify or not. You will get some sort of notification letting you know what the determination was. And of course, why you're here today, your state ship can help you apply. The ships all over the country are trained and ready to help people apply for extra help. So if you, uh, as Alicia said earlier, if you're, you know, you're sitting on the fence, you're not sure if you, if you qualify, you should go ahead and, and apply and, and let your ship help you. So a complementary program to the extra help program are the Medicare savings programs. Medicare savings programs are a type of Medicaid that help to pay for the costs of Medicare. Uh, they put that Part B premium of $148.50 back into your Social Security check each month. You may hear these programs referred to by the, the title Medicare buy-in programs or Medicare assistance programs. You may also hear them referred to by their acronyms, which are somewhat confusing. There are four Medicare savings programs, and you may hear them called QIMB or QMB, SLIMB, QI, and QDWI. The Qualified Medicare Beneficiary Program, or QIMB, is the most generous of these programs. It pays not only the Part B premium, but also the Part B deductibles, the co-payments, the co-insurance, as well as parts of uh, a cost in Part A, including a premium if a person doesn't have those work credits to qualify for free for premium free Part A. The specified low income Medicare beneficiary program pays the Part B premiums, as does the qualifying individual program. And then the Qualified Disabled and Working Individuals Program is a unique program specifically for individuals who are often younger than 65 and still working, but with a disability and only getting Part A. So a unique note about the Medicare Savings Programs is that unlike with Extra Help, which has a eligibility guidelines set by the federal government, the Medicare savings programs have some flexibility because they are administered by your state's Medicaid agency. Uh, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services offer states the ability to be more generous than the federal guidelines. So when I have this chart displayed here on the screen, I want you to know that these are only the federal eligibility rules 
for the, the three key programs, QMB, SlimB, and QI. I have not included QDWI because that is actually a, a somewhat unique program and there are a lot of earned income disregards for qualifying for that. So that's why that's not up here. Um, but you can see Quimby, uh, the monthly income is roughly set at 100% of the federal poverty level and then it goes slightly up for Slimby and QI. And then you have those resource levels as well. But I wanna emphasize that you should always check with your SHIP or your state Medicaid agency, or you can go to the exhibit hall under NCOA and download our chart because we know that seven states have raised the income threshold for these and are much, much more generous. For example, Washington DC, uh, you can earn income up to roughly $35,000 a year and still qualify for this program. Um, it's higher in places like Massachusetts and Connecticut as well. And 13 states in the District of Columbia have raised or eliminated the resource level requirements. So there is no asset test. As long as you have the income below the threshold, you would qualify. So we really encourage you to find out how it is applied in your state. And again, we have a detailed chart in our exhibit hall that indicates what your state's guidelines are. So how do you apply for the Medicare savings programs? Well, you can go to your state or local Medicaid office and you can find your contacts actually uniquely through the medicare.gov website um, by selecting your state and then other insurance programs. But I really emphasize that your state SHIP can help you apply. Just like with extra help, the SHIPs are specially trained to help people apply for the Medicare savings programs. And because SHIPs have such unique knowledge of Medicare, it, it's just a, you know, it's a special a relationship that they have uh, that, to be able to sort of guide you through that process. Now I want to just mention, because I talked about the Medicare savings programs as being a part of Medicaid, that there are other programs within Medicaid, obviously. And roughly 12 million people across the country have both Medicare and some form of Medicaid, whether that is the Medicare savings programs, whether that is um, Medicaid that helps to pay for long-term care and services. Um, but the important thing to know is if you or someone you love is one of those people, Medicare always pays first and Medicaid always pays last. And individuals should see providers that accept both programs in order to avoid being hit with any sort of surprise billing. There are many different ways that you can receive coverage if you have both Medicare and Medicaid, including through a single plan, which is often called an integrated care plan. And integrated care plans are designed to really help people to coordinate everything that they may need, whether that's, you know, behavioral health support, as well as, you know, their, their basic sort of uh, preventive services. Or you can also choose to get your, your care through separate plans, through original Medicare and then a separate standalone sort of Medicaid plan. Uh, it really depends on your needs and your, your provider network and what type of flexibility you would like to have. Your SHIP, as well as your local Medicaid office, can help sort through some of the different options that are available, especially in terms of figuring out which Medicare works best for you if you have Medicaid. Now, I've only talked about a few programs, but another thing that I wanted to mention is that some states also have what are called state pharmaceutical assistance programs. Um, and not, they're not in every state, but they're also an option for people who may not qualify for extra help, who may have income slightly above that limit. Um, you might want to check and see if your state has one of these and your ship should know about this as well. So again, you want to talk to your local ship. You've seen them in the exhibit hall. You're going to have time to, to visit them as well. I do also want to point out that the National Council on Aging has a network of benefits enrollment centers across the country. Uh, these are 80 community-based organizations, sometimes operating statewide. And they can help people with fixed income to apply for not only these programs, but also a range of other programs and benefits such as food assistance, energy assistance, utility assistance. And then we also have a free online screening tool called Benefits Checkup, where you can see if you might 
qualify for these programs as well as a range of other programs. Uh, again, I, I point to our exhibit booth so you can learn more. Um, we have a great sort of path to turning 65 and choosing Medicare for the first time, a little infographic. Uh, we also have these charts about extra help and the Medicare savings programs in 2021, as well as some key questions to ask if you have Medicare and Medicaid and what you're looking for when you're selecting your coverage. Uh, so with that, I think we're gonna have open time for questions and answers now.